Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the second episode of Learning Tarot with me. Uh, in today's uh, episode we're going to go into the Minor Arcana and I'm going to start it off with the cups. But first of all I just wanted to just do like a little mention or just like talk a little bit about the Minor um, Arcana and just sort of yeah go into that a little bit so um with the minor arcana it is split into like four elements or four suits or whatever you want to call them um so that is like the cups oh my god the camera's already playing up <laughs> yeah so that is uh the four elements or suits are the cups the wands the pentacles and the swords so all four of them are like a representation of the elements as well so the cups represent water um, the swords represent air the wands are fire and the pentacles are earth and as we all know um, especially if you're like into astrology it's a very similar meaning with that as well so like water signs for example are very like emotional and they're led with emotion um, that's the same in tarot so um, the water sign or cups is a symbolism of like emotion, like your emotional state and how you feel about things. Uh, the sword and air is a representation of communication, thoughts and your actions. Um, the wands is the representation of fire and fire is always about passion and creativity and things like that. And then the pentacle or earth it, um, is a the pentacles are a representation of earth which is a representation of like finance and work so more stability in those sort of stable like parts in your life um and then obviously in each of the um elements or suits or whatever you want to call them um they go up so it starts with ace then it goes two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then we have the page the knight the queen and the king so it's kind of similar to like a deck of cards um except you have like that additional one card for example um so yeah so it is it they do sort of go like that and their representation um they all have like a different meaning and then it sort of will resemble to like your emotional state if that makes sense so the first card is the ace of cups and it looks like so now the first card, usually in all of the um, suits or elements, represents like the beginning because it's the beginning of the sequence, the numbers, whatever you want to sort of say it. So um, for this one especially, it is like new relations and emotional development. Again, it's to do with your emotional side. So um, it's the start of something new in your emotion with your emotions so whether that is you're starting in a new relationship maybe you've got a new friendship something like that tends to resemble that um, when you have this in reverse it just tends to just represent like repressed feelings um, maybe you have that ability to maybe start something new and you're just being a bit cautious of it something like that so it's just like it's always like the opposite like I said in my previous video so that is the Ace of Cups. It is new relationships and emotional development. The Two of Cups looks like so. Now the Two of Cups is a partnership. Um, whenever you see two sort of figures, it tends to meet, mean that. It's quite easy to remember that because of that. So it is about a partnership, um, un unified love mutual attraction and friendship so you can see that quite easily you can remember that with this card because of the two people they're sharing a drink he's passing the drink over to her um yeah the symbol of like there's like a white and a black snake and they also like represent um what is it the book said that they represented Yeah, there you go. So the white snake stands for wisdom and the black sta uh, snake stands for healing. So it's all just about being unified, um, being together. Um, and yeah, that's the two of cups. So when you get this one in reverse, if, if the normal way it means being in a unified relationship, reverse it would tend to be like self-love, just being more on your own. It could also mean breakups and distrust. Now the Three of Cups is the next one and it looks like so. So in the card you can literally see the, with the way that the picture is depicted, like they're having a celebration. 
they're all just sort of like in a circle they're almost like doing a cheers as well so it is about like being in a bigger group a celebration um, collaboration unified again like just being in a more unified group um, I've also written here like it can represent creativity so you know when you're usually in a bigger group creativity can flow and just yeah collaboration working together celebration so when you get this one in reverse it can mean three's a crowd um independence or alone time so yeah just just think of like the bad things of three like it's such a common like um statement to say that three is a crowd and stuff like that so this tends to mean yeah collaboration it's a celebration it's good and then that can mean when the collaboration doesn't go so well three is a crowd it's just too many people maybe you need to be independent and alone so we're gonna go into four and the four of cups is like so And with this card, it tends to mean like it can be repressed feelings, um, apathy, disconnect, and reevaluation. So, oh, please don't go out of focus. There we go. Yeah. So with this card in particular, you can see that he like the cup is the fourth cup. Sorry, because there's one, two, and three here. So the fourth cup is being handed to him, and he's not even paying attention to it. He's sat with his knees up, so he's kind of just disconnecting from the world you can you can depict that from the card so it does tend to mean that sort of disconnect however the castle in the background and the lake tends to mean that there isn't there's hope still um so there is hope there but it's just about you're probably just gonna have to come to a realization about things and find things and just stuff like that so it tends to be about disconnect um when you get this in reverse think of like the worst case scenario so the fact that the castle's in the background and they're still being hope like you may still be like you may be disconnected but there's still hope there and um, when it's in reverse it just means that you're like completely detracting from any situation you're retreating you're being withdrawal withdrawal and just yeah all of that sort of stuff so it's just the negative outcome of that next we go in to the five of cups So with the five of cups you can see that there's like a person in a black cloak like this we've got three cups as well just here that have actually spilt um that are knocked over and the water is being spilt however you do have two cups that are still standing um but this card actually also represents um yeah sorrow regret failure and pessimism so if you just think of like the cups being like fallen over and like anything that's like hooded and black with their back towards you tends to mean like regret sorrow or just like um yeah anything sort of in a negative sense the failure i always think of like with the cups being like spill and like when you're just yeah just think of it as like you know whenever you're at a dinner party or something if you spill you, over your um glass you tend to just be like oh i'm so sorry so it's like regretful and sorrow and things like that however this card with the two that are standing there's still like that's like the representation of like the hope still there so like you can still fix the situation and again we've got the bridge I'm not sure if it's, yeah you've got the bridge going here with the castle in the background so a castle always represents like hope and the bridge is like that you haven't burnt that bridge yet so if you get this card in reverse it just tends to represent i've written here personal setback forgiveness and moving on so yeah it's just about the opposite of being sorrow like sorry and things like that so just think of the actual like castle and everything that's now represented so um this tends to be like very much about the figure like he's got his back towards you he's sorry he's sorry forget um sorry and regretful failure all those sort of things however there is still hope and here is when it's like you've forgiven yourself um and you're moving on and you've just had like a personal setback so the six of cups looks like so so with this one it's a little harder to remember just because for me personally what the card represents the image doesn't fully resonate with me and what the representation is i can see it um and i'm still trying to like connect it but um yeah so this one 
means past memories and future dreams, joy and reminiscing. So it's supposed to represent a very like childlike and youthful um, sort of self in that element. Um, the child is supposed to represent like the youthfulness and the joy and the future dreams and the um, older, I think it's a dwarf, the older dwarf um, is supposed to represent like the past memories. So like the fact that they're having like a nice, this is the way I'm trying to remember it. Um, the way that he's like holding flowers and they're like, they've got flowers, lilies into the, um, in the cups. And I know for a fact that lilies are a representation of like innocence and purity. Um, because my name is Lily and I Googled what the meaning of a lily is. So yeah, the flowers, it definitely represents that innocence of youth like that. Um, and it's just like, it's a good thing. It's almost like a reminiscing, um, old, like reminiscing your old self, maybe something like that. Like your old self is visiting your younger self. That's how I'm trying to remember it. Um, and you get this in reverse and it's like about living in the past and not moving forward and kind of just like, rather than reminiscing, it's gone too far. <laughs> so the next card is the Seven of Cups, which looks like so. So you can see loads of symbols in the clouds. <laughs> Someone just sat on a bench chilling. Um, so this tends to be like distraction. Um, yeah, your head in the clouds. You've just got a lot going on in your mind. Uh, daydreaming, choices and opportunities is what I've written down. So um, this can also be seen in a negative way though. Like maybe you're more in your head and like daydreaming rather than actually like physically taking action. Um, the only reason that I think of this is like it could also potentially be negative is because again, the black cloaked figure with their back towards us, that tends, we know from um, the five of cups that that tends to be a representation of like sorrow and regret and failure and stuff like that. So there is that element into this card, but um, yeah, the fact that there's so much symbolism, it's op opportunity basically. And when you do get this in reverse, it basically just means an overwhelmed by choice. Uh, maybe that you're just too in your head and you don't actually know which direction to go around, confusion, things like that. Now go on to the Eight of Cups, which looks like so. Now again, we have another dark cloak with their back towards us. So we know that there is some form of regret or something like not um, failure or looking for forgiveness, things like that. So with the Eight of Cups, again, yeah, I've written disappointment, escapism, abandonment and betrayal. So the fact that he is, yeah, he's got his back towards us. We're also in like a really rocky sort of environment. So just think of that as well, like your emotional state is tends to be quite rocky. There is like a little crescent moon in, this, in there as well. And that's obviously like a representation of the earlier stages or it could even be the, the end. Yeah, that could be the end of it. So that could be like the end of a cycle I think that moon represents. So like, yeah, maybe you're coming to the end of something, you're, being dis you're feeling disappointed and regret and things like that. So when you get this in reverse, it tends to, it represents one more try and aimless drifting, aimless drifting. So you've obviously been attempting something, you're, you're, you are climbing to be fair. So representation of climbing, it's in a rocky situation. It's yeah, the end of a cycle, um, the back towards us is betrayal, things like that with it reversed. The fact that the cups are stacked in like a really positive way, you could remember it in that way as well. Nine of cups. It's like that. So this one, there's like a whole feast on the table and you have two people embracing. So you've got two people embracing and you've got a whole table with the feast. So this obviously represents like a celebration. Um, there's like 
yeah, food tends to represent like fertility and things like that, but this is in like an emotional sense. So I've written here sens sensual satisfaction, contentment and gratitude. So being thankful, the fact that they're holding and um, yeah, they're holding each other. He's got his hand on her, on the back of her head slash neck. Yeah, so that's obviously like in a loving way, um, gratitude, things like that. So when you get this card in reverse, you get dissatisfaction and indulgence. So you've taken the feast way too far. You had that one extra grape. I'm gonna say grape because I can see quite a lot of grapes. You had that on. You've had that one extra grape and now you feel too stuffed and too full and you've overindulged. <laughs> So the Ten of Cups, looks like so. So this is obviously like a representation of family. Um, you've got the kids playing, the mum and dad looking on, holding hands. You've got the big house in the background as well. We know that the house represents like the castle and stuff. It represents like that hope and things like that. So here I've writ written divine love, blissful relationships. So you can just see that they're having that enjoyment. So it's, it's that fulfillment, isn't it? I feel like a lot of people in life, that's their goal is to have that family and things like that and have that whole like happy picture. Um, so that tends to represent so it's quite easy to remember that sort of like that blissful loving family um, in a good environment the kids are happy the family's happy the background is all happy the house which always represents um, hope and um, things like that so when you get this card however in reverse it does represent disconnect struggling relationships so it's yeah it's always the opposite of what the card upright means so there could be tension in family life or maybe in friendships, um, things like that. Now we go into the Page of Cups, which looks like this. So I've written here with the Page of Cups, it's creative opportunity, curiosity and possibility. So in the little book that comes with the cards, it says that the fish is an image of the potential for deep understanding of the inner world. That for me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess we just have to try and remember that that's what a fish represents because I don't really think of creativity when I think of a fish, but um, the fact that there's a fish in the cup, I'm not sure if you can see that. It's not the most easiest thing to see on the camera, but there is like a fish in the cup um, and the cup's got water, so it's almost like preserving life. Um, I don't know how you can remember this as creativity though. But the curiosity and possibility, I like the, the go with the word possibility more because um, the fact it's saving a life, you're giving that life that extra possibility, even though it's outside of like the river that's just below, it's, an, it's another chance, another opportunity, I guess. You can kind of see it's like a different situation for that fish. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one for me is a little bit harder to, rem to remember. Um, so if there is anyone that's really good at tarot or like just, yeah, it'd be a good way if you could comment down below on the way that you interpret this card, if there's a different and easier way, because this image, like the symbolism of this image, I'm just not, yeah, I'm just not getting that. But anyway, get this one in reverse and it's creative blocks and doubting intuition. Going into the Knight of Cups. Now the Knight of Cups is literally like, the way I re just remember it, it's like your knight in shining armour, so like that person that's just like your saviour, like all that sort of jazz, like I've literally written romance, charm and beauty, so it's like your knight in shining armour has come to get you and, and has come to save you and that's what like everyone always is looking for in that like whole princess novel thing, isn't that like all girls are always going on about how they're just waiting for their knight in shining, ar shining armour, so um, that's what the knight represents think of like your knight in your emotional sense it's yeah it's all romantic and charming and yeah <laughs> get this one in reverse and it is moody jealousy and unrealistic so just like disney sold all those stories about how your prince is going to come and save you and kiss you when you're in a deep sleep unrealistic <laughs> queen of cups looks like this 
She just looks like a badass, to be honest. Um, this card represents pretty much just like an absolute queen. Um, just think of just, yeah, a queen in emotional state. So uh, just a badass, killing it, really compassionate, loving, um, controlled, poise, all that sort of stuff. She just looks great. A little bit mystical, because there are just um, like mermaids in the chair. I've written compassionate, caring, emotionally stable and intuitive. So thinking of all the opposites when you get this in reverse, it's um, just being unemotionally stable. Um, unemotionally stable, is that even? Emotionally unstable. <laughs> uh, yeah, just I've written here, codependency, self-love, self-care um, as well. So it's just, yeah, not being independent, having to depend on other people, um, potentially like you need to uh, worry more about self-care and self-love and things like that. And then the King of Cups. So the King of Cups is a representation of emotionally balanced, compassion and diplomatic. So um, just how a king should be pretty much. Uh, a ruler, just but with compassion. You need to remember that the cups are a representation of your emotions. So um, think of like a good emotional king. Uh, it's just, yeah, compassionate, fair, things like that. Um, get this one in reverse, and it is self-compassion, inner feelings, moodiness, and emotionally manipulative. Um, so yeah, just think of like a narcissist when they just think the whole world revolves around them. Um, this is a king that genuinely cares about his people, and this is someone who thinks it's just him that matters. <laughs> Um, and that pretty much sums up all of the cups. Um, the numbers are a lot easier to um, interpret because the imaging is quite quite easy to just, yeah. You have to just pretty much just resonate with the images. Um, for me personally, I do find the page of cups the hardest one to um, remember what it what the meaning is just because uh, I don't see anything creative in that one to be honest that that would represent creativity for me personally but um, I'd definitely be interested to see to know how you guys interpret the cups and um, if it's an easier way than the way that I've just described it but <laughs> yeah I hope you have enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like um, and a comment and and share it if you have enjoyed it because that really really helps me out uh, I will be n uploading next week. Uh, I'm not sure what cards I'll be doing though. Maybe I'll go into the swords. I think I might do the swords next. Uh, so yeah, just I'll see you next week with another witchy video on Wednesday. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>